Hi everyone, Wally Nichols with the Asset Guidance Group. Weekly update for the week ending August the 26th, 2022. So Chairman Powell did it again. Uh, he came out, well, you know, they've got a job to do at the Fed and that's to keep uh, prices under control and uh, inflation uh, from running rampant. And so they are continuing to do that. So the signal that he gave in his speech today was that uh, they're going to learn from historical mistakes. They've been really studying the 1970s and that they're going to come out and continue to do the uh, probably 0 0.75 uh, rate hikes for the foreseeable future until we get a greater movement down. So they got about a half a percent uh, decrease in inflation. I think uh, the, the, the period before that they were looking at inflation was still 6.83. Now they had it down at 6.23. They're going to keep going until they get a sustained uh, a neighborhood of 2%, which means, you know, the, that rates or interest rates are going up. So that influences the stock valuation model. So what's happening? Uh, stocks are struggling at support uh, all, uh, all day, really, ever since that speech, about 1030 a.m. Eastern. So uh, we'll be keeping our eye at uh, just at 40, uh, 4,000 on the S&P 500 uh, on the um, on the uh, Nasdaq, it would be eleven nine forty five is what we're keeping our eyes on, and the um, um, uh, small small cap uh, right at eleven ninety two. Call you know eleven ninety two, eleven ninety three. Call it twelve hundred, and then the mid cap uh, need to watch out for um, uh, twenty four. 2480 something there thereabouts uh, 2415 out uh, absolutely uh, uh, the lowest that uh, we would want to go and then the, the the Dow the big guys uh, the dividend payers uh, is going to be right at 32,000 uh, okay just just a hair above that 3240. Yeah, thirty-two thousand forty, uh, and so uh, you know may have to start looking again. This is a, turning out to be a, one of those classic bear market rallies that would have ran, uh, except except for but for the uh, inflation news, and that's a big but for us. So here we are. So uh, that's where we go with that. Now let's take a look at how we govern ourselves and how, how we navigate these types of markets with these types of changes going on with an eye towards proper management of risk will increase our probability of successful growth and growth is what we need to overcome this inflation uh, between the time uh, between where we are now and the time when uh, we reach the end of the inflation period. Let's let's drill down into that. Okay, so what I was just saying was I was alluding to items where we are or, or, or statistics where we would take action. Okay, that is not predicting the market. We don't try to predict the market. We don't. We're not in the business of predicting the future. We're in the business of managing risk. And so let's just take a step back from this and look at people who have tried to forecast and predict the future in terms of the market so if you go back to 2008 just about this time of the year most people back in 2008 saw the uh, the s p 500 making some spectacular gains as time went on and as we know what ultimately happened in september of october of that year is that the actual result is the market went down 38 and a half percent okay so for that reason we don't engage in in crystal ball watching okay um a funny uh, a funny quote by john kenneth galbraith one uh, one of the uh, uh, great economic uh, economists of uh, yesteryear was that the only function of economic forecasting is to make astrology look respectable <laughs> that's why we don't engage in forecasting okay because uh there's just too many variables at play we live in a we live in a universe of of at best organized chaos okay and so we take the data as does everyone else and we and we uh read from the uh information that is provided to us and then take action that's mathematically and scientifically supportable rational based upon that information now let me come back to that keyword rational hang on just a second let's look at that see now we don't necessarily require that the markets be rational either okay uh, because we're not making market predictions we're trading 
based on the facts that are presented to us daily. Okay, this is facts, fact-based investing. And, you know, we may or may not be fully invested right now at the outside, okay, uh, in light of a 2% downturn right now at the outside. Uh, most Our most aggressive models are probably still north of 60% in cash. Most of our money that we have right now that we're managing is in cash. So well over, uh, right at, uh, right at two-thirds uh, are, are still in cash or cash substitutes, okay, to, uh, to pace inflation but we are, are not fully exposed uh, to the risk, okay? So this type of, uh, of managing and tactical trading doesn't require either the markets nor investors it to be either rational or efficient. We just trade the, the data based on, wait for it, okay? Supply and demand, okay? We simply use metrics that view the supply and demand fluctuations in the market at any given point in time. That affords us to know that there are two truths that we can derive from supply and demand analysis, okay? And one of those is that markets trend. Frequently, they do so on a long-term basis, okay? So we have to measure the trend. And then we take a look at the second truth, which is that performance tends to persist. So once a body is put in motion, it tends to stay in motion until some countervailing force changes that motion and direction and dissipates that energy in a different way. So strengths and weaknesses are more likely to continue than they are reversed. Today we had a big news day. Yesterday we were buying the rumor. Today they're selling the news, okay? And that was on Chairman Jay Powell's speech him being the, the chair of the Fed Reserve and saying that well, we're coming at with more rate increases until inflation subsides and, and, and we have evidence that it's going to stay uh, in, in, uh, in submission. So every Monday morning at the bottom of our blog post that we mail, uh, email out to clients, we're going to show you this long-term look at the markets, okay? That's an indication, look at that long-term trend. Uh, the long-term trend generally stays in place for years at a time, okay? And as terms of performance uh, persisting, we continually look, measure performance, stick with the winners, get rid of the losers uh, as fast as we can. So just to sum up this little discussion, we don't predict the markets. No one knows what the markets are going to do. There is no um, big governing unit out there that is in control of everything. Unfortunately, there's no Oz, okay? There's nothing, and even, even if you watch The Wizard of Oz, you found out that that was an illusion, okay? No one's in total control of anything. We deal with managed chaos in all of our exposure in this life, in this universe. It's just the realities that there are. So. A good measure of skepticism is always welcome. We have to govern ourselves and not let ourselves drift into cynicism, okay? So we do this by engaging and not predicting the future, but looking at what is, looking at the facts that are, engaging in fact-based fact -based investing. Uh, we don't use prediction-based investing. We don't use academic, necessarily theory-based investing. We deal with supply and demand and make our decisions accordingly on that. Identify the trend, pick the, uh, pick the winners, jettison the slackers. Okay, that'll be a good wrap for this week. We appreciate uh, everybody being engaged with us and appreciate your continued input and your continued uh, uh, involvement and in allowing us to, to manage your money and be your advisors. So watch out. Uh, for next week, it's going to be a short week. We're, we're going to have uh, uh, the next, you know, it's going to Labor Day is coming up. That's what I'm saying. As we end the end of summer and start dropping into fall, and it's coming sooner than we would thought. Okay. So in the meantime, enjoy this beautiful weather that we have. Do whatever it takes to make you happy, because you don't know if we stay happy, that's the key to longevity.